So the next topic we're going to focus on is related to barrier synchronizers. So in this overview section, we'll talk about what the different barrier synchronizers are in Java and how they allow threads or so-called parties to wait for operations performed in other threads to complete. So that's what they're used for. And I'll give you a human known use of barrier synchronization to kind of make it more intuitive. So what is barrier synchronization? So a barrier is basically a synchronization mechanism that halts the progress of one or more threads at a particular point. And you'll see there's lots of analogies we'll use to make this more intuitive. Maybe an example for an entry barrier would be the starting gate for a horse race where all the horses kind of show up when they get in their starting gate and only when they're all in place and the, the gun goes off or the bell rings or whatever happens do they all begin to start. Obviously it would not be a very fair race if uh, the horses could just start running as soon as they got to the start, right? That wouldn't make it good. So that's an example of a barrier. There's a couple of different ways you can use barriers. One way, which is kind of informed by the, the horse race example, or another example would be like starting blocks for the 100 meter dash or a marathon or whatnot, is as an entry barrier. And so what you do here is you make a bunch of concurrent computations wait until something is initialized, until initialization is finished. So uh, there are a lot of different good examples of this. Let's assume for sake of argument we've got some kind of maybe image processing uh, task or tasks that we need to have performed. And we're going to have a main thread here spawn a bunch of worker threads. Let's say that there are four, but there could be n. And these worker threads, which are sometimes called parties, uh, we want them to all wait until the main thread performs some potentially time-consuming initialization of data structures. So maybe it's going to pre-stage a bunch of images to process or whatnot. And so the worker threads all park here, waiting until the main thread completes its initialization. And so we might have a, a barrier of some kind. We'll see there's different kinds of barriers in a minute. But the barrier might be such that it's called you know, M initialization done barrier. And so everybody waits for the initialization to be done. And whenever the initialization is finished, the count goes from 1 to 0 or, or whatever. And that basically is an indication to the worker threads that they can start to do their thing. So when the main thread has reached a point where it wants to let the other threads run, it decrements the count. And then all of the other threads or parties can begin to do some work. That's an entry barrier. And you'll be using entry barriers in your next programming assignment to make sure that all the worker threads that are going to be doing the palantir gazing all start at the same time. So no matter what order the threads are created in, we want them all to kind of hold off until they're all ready to run. Another mechanism, another use of barrier synchronization is as an exit barrier. And in this case, you're going to block all the concurrent threads that have finished or done their processing before you let them continue. And continue could mean different things. It could be continue to shut down, or continue to run again, or continue to do something else. So here's another example where after starting all the worker threads to do their processing of some images, the main thread may want to wait for all the workers to finish. So in this case, what we would do is we would have another barrier, which might start out with a count of four, one for every worker thread. And the main thread is just going to wait on this barrier until the count drops to zero. And as the worker threads run and they complete, as they go away or they finish, that decrements the count. And only when the count drops to zero can the main thread continue. So that's called an exit barrier. And then there are variants of this, one of which is called a cyclic barrier. And the basic idea with a cyclic barrier is you have a group of threads all of which wait for each other to reach a common barrier before they can all advance to the next cycle. And I'll talk about some analogies of this. A good example would be like a, a crew of workers on an assembly line that all work on, say, a car as it moves to the assembly line. And they all wait for the car to show up. Then they start working. And then when they're done, they all stop. The car moves down. The next car comes up. They start all over again. So that would be an example of a cyclic barrier. 
So you can have a fixed or variable sized pool of threads or parties that can run concurrently. And at the end of each cycle, some decision is made about whether to do the next round or to continue with the next, uh, the next cycle. You can categorize barriers in several different ways. So we'll see that one of them is the, um, the number of iterations. Is it one shot or is it cyclic? That's one dimension. And then the other is how many parties are there? Are there a fixed number of parties or threads or a variable number of parties or threads? Uh, for some strange reason I don't quite understand, they decided to use the word party, but usually it means thread. So when you see party, think of a thread. So one model, of course, is a one-shot iteration where you're going to do things one time, and then you have to reinitialize things from scratch if you want to do another, another cycle or another phase. And we'll see that there's something called a countdown latch that can be used for this, as well as something called a phaser. We're not going to talk as much about phasers right now. You don't need it for the next assignment. The other mechanism you have is cyclic. That means you can have multiple iterations of groups of threads. In that case, we have a cyclic barrier, as the name suggests. It's cyclic. And we also can use phasers. Phasers are sort of the, the most generalizable form of barrier synchronizer. OK, so countdown latch and cyclic barrier can be used for fixed numbers of parties or threads, whereas the phaser can be used for variable numbers of parties and threads. That's one of the things that provides it with its flexibility and its power. And obviously, these categories are not mutually exclusive. You can use things in different ways. All right, so what's a human known use of a barrier synchronizer? One, there's lots of examples. One example I kind of like is a museum tour guide. So if you've ever gone to a museum and you want to have a guided tour, like let's say you go to the Biltmore and you're going to get a tour, you have a tour group. And the way things work there is basically that you might have an entry barrier which says, you know, the tour starts at 1015. And so everybody kind of waits outside until it's 1015 or until everybody shows up. And then once the tour guide says, OK, it looks like everybody in my tour group who's paid for the tour is here, you know, count them all up. Now we can all go in as a group. So that's kind of an entry barrier. There's also an exit barrier, which might be that you can't close the museum down until the last group of tourists leaves. So you don't want to have people you know, stuck in the museum, like uh, that movie Night in the Museum. You want to make sure that they all are done. And when they're done, then it, you can go ahead and, and close things down. So those are entry and exit barriers. And you could also have cyclic barriers during your tour, where you might say, you know, now we're going to move into the Rembrandt room. And so everybody comes in, and you mill around for a while and look at Rembrandt. And then you say, oh, we're going to go to the Andy Warhol room. And so you kind of move as a group to the next room. So people are doing things as a group. And obviously, you could use this model either for fixed sized or variable numbers of tourists, as long as you keep track of when everybody's there uh, in order to be able to continue on to the next phase. OK, so that's the end of the overview section. That just kind of give people a big picture view of what synchronization with barriers is like. And then we'll talk about the details of some of the different mechanisms here in a second.